vision of it because there's a lot more to do in that series. But this morning we're beginning a series that I'm going to teach today for second service. And, uh, you know, I'll see how far we can go with that before the 30 days of glory. Amen. All right. Matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Next verse. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Next verse teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world amen now i'd like you to listen patient you know very carefully this morning jesus in saying all power is given to me is not teaching from the book of matthew and he's not teaching from Acts of the Apostles. Neither is he teaching from the book of Colossians. When he said, all power is given to me in heaven and on earth. He was teaching from the Old Testament books. He wasn't teaching from Matthew. <laughs> When we say the word of God, the word of God preached by brother Paul, the word of God preached in the book of Acts is the Old Testament. Is the Old Testament. You know, Matthew was only writing what Jesus taught. So he must have been teaching from somewhere. <laughs> Matthew just recorded eyewitness account. Matthew was in the audience. Jesus was teaching. Then Matthew recorded what Jesus taught. So when Jesus now walked in their midst and he said, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. He was teaching them from the Old Testament books. And um, uh, it's important for me to quickly say this because, um, you know, by virtue of where we are as a church, I can safely say what I want to say now. Mm -mm. That, that, Old Testament and New Testament compartmentalization of the Bible is not inspired by God. It's not inspired by God because in the original there is no Old Testament and there is no New Testament divided. It is a privilege of translators who split the book. Just like chapter and verses are not inspired by God. Chapters and verses were pri the privilege of translators. They added all of that. That's not in the original. In the original, you just have a, a later. A later that started from Genesis and just ran to Revelation without chapter, verses, and punctuations. There's no punctuation, there's no chapter, there's no verse in the original, and there's no division of Old and New Testament. Now that's important for you to know. It's translators who took the privilege of translating and added all of that. Which of course, in Bible interpretation, that is some sort of interpretation, but that's not accurate interpretation. Because that is what gives people the impression to think that there is a God of the Old Testament and a God of the New Testament, which does not exist anywhere. Am I teaching good? Right. And so you will need to you will need to grow and mature and be in a word church like this to understand what I just said to you. So that when you read the Bible, you won't have that mindset. You will have the mindset of someone who is learned. So that title, Old Testament and New Testament, was not inspired by God because the people who wrote, like I said, didn't write it as Old Testament. Okay? Now that attempt has really caused a lot of problem because some people think once they start reading the book of Matthew, they're reading the New Testament. But they forget that there is more, there is more New Testament in the Old Testament than there is in the New Testament. You didn't hear what I said. 
there is more New Testament in the Old Testament than there is in the New Testament because the New Testament is drawn out from the Old Testament. Keep that somewhere it will come in handy in the course of this. So Jesus taught from the books we refer to as the Old Testament and uh, that is Genesis to Malachi. And there's nothing in the Bible that says that there is a distinction between Genesis to Malachi and Matthew to Revelation. That's, you know, just, just an idea that comes up years after the Bible was written. When John, for example, wrote John chapter 1 verse 1, and he says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word there is the word logos. Logos. And it's referring to Genesis. In Genesis was the word. The word beginning is Genesis. He calls Genesis the word of God. He calls Genesis the word of God. So if Genesis is the word of God... How do you think that the Old Testament is gone? So the concept of the Old Testament and New Testament are derived from studying. It is when you study, you will now know where there is New Testament and where there is Old Testament. You don't use books to divide them. It's in studying, you will know that, okay, this is Old Testament. And in studying, you will know that, okay, this is New Testament. Because there is Old Testament in New Testament. And there is New Testament in Old Testament. Teaching good? Good. Now. You will also discover that in the New Testament, there are practices of the Old Testament. And within the books we refer to as Old Testament, we are going to see a lot of New Testament as we study. The reason for Colossians, Ephesians, Thessalonians, Philippians is because they read from Genesis to Malachi. What we call the word of God is fundamentally the Old Testament. That's what we call the word of God. So every time we hear Jesus say something, what he is saying is from the Old Testament. And I'm going to use that in this teaching. Old Testament, New Testament, just for the purpose of this teaching. But whenever I say Old Testament and New Testament, I expect you to know what I'm implying. Uh, is that clear? I expect you to know Okay, now. Hallelujah. When Jesus taught, he taught from the Old Testament books, which is the word of God. So he says, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me. The word authority is the Greek word exousia. Exousia that deals with responsibility or privilege to act. Responsibility or privilege to act or a privilege not to act. And then he says, in heaven and earth. That word heaven and earth is another word that has been transformed in the church world over the years. <laughs> the word heaven and earth. Because we often say that heaven is where believers go to when they die. And it has no verse in the Bible. There's no verse in the Bible that says... When believers die, they go to heaven. There's no such verse. If you find it, please bring it to me within the week. But do believers go to heaven when they die? Yes. But it's not written in the Bible. Some people say you are blessed in the heavenly places, but you have to convert it to the natural. Hmm. That's deep, very deep. You have to convert it from the spiritual to the natural. People shout, whoa, revelation. Rema. Remified. <laughs> and then they will tell you, God wants you to connect. So that by connecting, you can transfer. You know what the connection is? So is it. <laughs> Did you say idea? <laughs> uh, preachers can be funny sometimes. 
when they find an audience that do not do their due diligence. So when you have the word heaven, because we always thought heaven is where you go to when you die. Or somewhere outside the earth. In fact, our view sometimes is so physical. I'm going to go to heaven. I am going to go to heaven. So when you die, angels will carry you and put you in angelic transporting, transporting system. Phew! To heaven. Oh boy. So that's like traveling to another planet. That's why we thought that in the Tower of Babel, they were travel, tra traveling to heaven. They were trying to get to heaven. Wow. Where is the heaven? I'm going above the shadows. Shadows? Beyond the clouds. Behind the clouds. Some of you that were there in those days, you know what I just... Above the shadows. Or oh, heaven is a spiritual place. Where? They will tell you outside the earth. That means it's still physical. Or heaven is where God dwells. All right, let's stay with heaven is where God dwells for now. So when he says all authority in heaven and earth is given to me, that means all access in heaven and earth is given to me. So the phrase we require now is that phrase heaven and earth. Stay with me. He uses heaven and earth together. Now, there's a huge difference when he uses heaven alone. And when he uses heaven and earth together. They are different. But the moment you see it used together as heaven and earth, there's a particular concept he is talking about. Heaven and earth, therefore, will be Genesis 1.1. All authority in heaven and earth is given to me. So Jesus was preaching from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Because that's the law of first mention. That's the first place we see that. And Jesus speaking about heaven and earth in Matthew was in reference to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. So Jesus was teaching Genesis, Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20 making reference to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. So let's explore the meaning of that concept in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 where he prayed or taught what we often call the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 10. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 10. After this manner therefore pray ye. Our father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Next verse. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth. Heaven and earth. Thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. He says thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Heaven, earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You, your will on earth as in heaven. Now look at that statement. Our father. Our father. Remember, we said again, Jesus is teaching from where? Genesis. It means that God is father where? In Genesis or in the Old Testament. So the concept of God being father is an Old Testament concept. It means it began from Genesis. Stay with me. 
God being father. So our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Why did he use the word heaven? Our father which art in heaven. Why the word heaven and earth? If you observe Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1, 1, 2, and 3. Let's read so you stay with me there very. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The earth, darkness. The earth, darkness. Darkness, the earth. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of darkness. Introducing God's new creation project. Genesis 1-2 is the introduction of God's new creation project. Please stay with me. That is God's redemption plan announced in Genesis 1 verse 2. Darkness on the earth and the spirit of God introducing God's reality. So verse 2 of Genesis one, the spirit of God was hovering over it, incubating on the earth. Incubating. The darkness there is not the absence of the sun. Because in verse 3 of Genesis chapter 1, Genesis 1, 3, it says, put it up quickly, Genesis 1, 3, and God said, let there be light and there was light. God said, let there be light. So the heaven and the earth of Genesis 1-1 is the spirit of God. The heaven and earth of Genesis 1-1 is the spirit of God. Verse 3, let there be light or me be light. Me be light. Stay with me. The word Yahweh. Yahweh, I will be what I will be. I am what I am. I will be what I will be. Yahweh. So when he says, let there be light, what he means is God is light. God is light. Yahweh, I will be what I will be because I am what I am. So because I am what I am, Light be. God is light. God is light. Now, that's why the light there is not the sun, the moon, and the stars. It's not the moon and the sun and the stars. The light there is God himself. Which means a new creation in light. A new creation in in light. Now, <clears throat> please remove your religious caps now. Because we're dealing with accurate knowledge now. There has been darkness and now there's the new creation in the light. So when Jesus says, our father which art in heaven, he is saying the father or God who is a spirit. The father or God who is a spirit. Brother John helps us with that. John 4, 23. Put it up for me. John chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. For the father seeketh such to worship him. Next verse. God a spirit. The spirit of God moved upon the face of darkness. And God said, I am light. Now, God a spirit. And they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. 
Theos pneuma. God's spirit. Now, rather than use the word spirit in Matthew, you have the word heaven. Matthew didn't use spirit. Matthew used heaven to mean the same thing that Genesis was talking about. <clears throat> now, John says God is spirit. So in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, 2 and 3, you find a new creation. God is beginning a new heaven and a new earth. A new creation. A new people. That's how the Bible opened up. The Bible opened up introducing God's ultimate project. The new man. The Bible opened up introducing God's project. The new creation. In the light. Now, so the word waters, waters is understood by theologians to mean people. Waters. The spirit of God hovered over the people. Moved on the face of the waters. That the spirit of God was hovering over the people announcing his new creation plan. Stay with me. So the spirit of God in all the earth. The word waters means people or nations. So in Genesis 1 to which is the light of God in verse 3 is God starting a project beginning something like light as the answer to darkness. Light as the answer to darkness. So when Jesus says, our father which art in heaven, he is reading Genesis chapter 1. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, the use of heaven by Bible writers, the use of the word heaven. Now look at me everybody. Please look at me. Stop writing. I hope you realize that English is not heavenly language. I hope you realize that Greek and Hebrew is not heavenly language. These are earthly created languages for men to use in communicating with one another. So when the writers wrote the Bible, they looked for human language. To use to explain the realities. That's why Moses will use heaven. Moses will use spirit. Matthew will use heaven. To mean the same thing. Stay with me. So you must understand when we start talking about words, word study in the Bible, we are studying human language to explain spiritual realities. Okay, so now, that word, heaven and earth, is often referred to as the clouds, the atmosphere, and its distance. The clouds, the atmosphere, and its distance. Then the earth where people are. They use that phrase. Heaven in reverence to God. Because the Jews you discover. That Matthew was the one who used that phrase the most. Heaven, 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 earth. Kingdom of heaven. Matthew used it more than anybody else. Kingdom of heaven rather than kingdom of God. Matthew. Because heaven was used like a reverence, reverence point for God. Oh, God is highly exalted. God is way beyond man. So to explain way beyond man, God in heaven, man on earth. So that was used to show that God's level is not man's level. So the language to explain that is heaven 
earnest. Stay with me. So, where God is and what God does is like heaven compared to earth. Following? So, heaven is used to describe God's activities on the earth. Heaven is used to describe God's activities in the earth or the work of his spirit. It's not planet. That is very, 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 very far. Rather, where heaven and earth are apart. You look up, you see the, the atmospheric heavens. It's far. So as far as the heaven is from the earth, that is how far God is from man in his activities and in his personality. So when a man on the earth says, our father which art in heaven is reverence to say, I acknowledge that you are in a realm of your own higher than mine. Okay, stay with me. Which means it shows the distance between man and God and that distance was caused by sin. Heaven and earth is a communication of distance between God and man. And the distance was created by sin. Separation. Uh -uh. Don't worry, get it. God has never walked outside the earth since Genesis. <laughs> he has no business elsewhere. <laughs> where else will he be walking? He will only walk where men are. Will he walk in an empty planet? He will walk in an empty planet now. He will walk where men are because his interest is man. So since after Genesis, God has never been found walking elsewhere other than the earth. This is God's focus. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Now, But the work of God in the earth is heavenly. Yeah. He has never been found walking outside the earth. But his work in the earth is heavenly. Euphoronius in the Greek. I've taught you that, right? So when Jesus said, our father which art in heaven, he is making a distinction in Matthew 5. The first time he mentions father. Remember, he is reading from the Old Testament. Look at Matthew 5, 43 to 45. Matthew 5, 43 to 45. Put it up for me. You have heard, please stay with me. You have heard that it had been said. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Next verse. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Why? That you may be... Jesus is teaching from where? Genesis, that you may be the children of your father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Give me verse 48, Matthew 5 48. Be therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Mm. This word, be therefore perfect there. I want you to observe that word very well. Be therefore perfect. 
Jesus is teaching from the Old Testament. So where is Jesus teaching be perfect from? Genesis 17 verse 1. Genesis chapter 17 verse number 1. Put it up quickly. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Be thou perfect. Quoting from Genesis 17 verse 1. Even as your father in heaven is perfect. Now, Leviticus 11.44 Leviticus 11.44 For I am the Lord your God, you shall therefore sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy. For I am holy. That word holy, there is a word perfect. Perfect. The same word, I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves in any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So when he says, the Lord is perfect, the word perfect, there is not maturity. It means holiness. Holiness is complete separation and difference from the rest. Complete separation and difference from the rest. Which means, be different as your father which is in heaven is different. Which means that when he called God our father in heaven was to make a distinction from earthly fathers. Our father in heaven was used to make a distinction between our heavenly father and our earthly fathers. That they are not the same and they are operating in different realms. Which means be different as your father is different, separate. Matthew 5, 45, your heavenly father, your heavenly, Euphrenius, your heavenly father sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Go to Matthew 7 and we will come back to Matthew 5 shortly. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. <clears throat> Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. If you take that verse out of context, you will assume that what he is saying means ask anything that comes to your mind. It's not even possible. You can't ask God anything that comes to your mind. Can you ask God to make you God? <laughs> you can't ask God. But when you take it out of context, you can make it say anything. Remember, the scriptures ha have only life within its context. Once you take a verse out of context, it's dead. The life of any Bible verse is within its surrounding environment. Therefore, it can only be interpreted rightly within the confines of its environment, not outside its environment. Don't ever forget that. Which means, ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened. It's not ambiguous. It's only as it relates within that context. So that you don't start asking things that even you yourself know you are sounding crazy. God, transport me to mass without any machine. You're being stupid. That's the height of illiteracy. Because you're not understanding. God cannot give you anything you ask. So, ask, seek, knock. Should not be taken out of context. Look at that Matthew 7 verse 8. Let's move a little further. Matthew chapter 7 verse 8. For everyone that asks it, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Remember in chapter 6. In chap when he was talking about ask, you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock, you shall open. He expected that you have already read chapter 6. Before arriving at chapter 7. You can't just go and read chapter 7. Uh -uh. It's a contextual material. 
there is a build up in the later reading. He expects you to have read chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6 and as a progression of the thought. Chapter 7 Acts, you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. What does chapter 6 say? Seek first the kingdom. So what you should be seeking, asking and knocking will be the kingdom. Because in chapter 6, it's already said, seeking first the kingdom of God, that's what to seek. And it's righteousness, and all these other things shall be added. And in chapter 6, he already told you, do not seek what the Gentiles seek. The Gentiles seek for food, they seek for clothes, they seek for car, they seek for money. Don't seek what they seek. For you, seek the kingdom. So when he now says, ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find, he's talking about his kingdom will be available to anybody who seeks, knocks, and asks, it will not be denied. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm teaching here. Because he is teaching in context. He is teaching in context. Now, Matthew 6, 33, then we come back to where we are. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's what to seek. And his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, what are you asking for in chapter 7? The same kingdom in chapter 6. Now, then the next thing is Matthew 7, 9 to 11. Stay with me. Matthew 7, verse 9 to 11. Or, what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will give him a stone? Or, if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he then... Being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more? That's a word to underline. How much more? Your father won't give you what you give to your children. Your father will give much more. It's not at your level. So he won't give what you are giving. You are already giving it. He doesn't need to duplicate your effort. So the father gives much more. And much more is not fish, it's not bread. It's not eggs. Your father gives to you on earth who is evil compared to God. God can come to your father's level who is evil to be competing with bread and fish. When God now will operate from his superior realm which is heaven while you are on earth he won't give earth he will give much more. Touch your neighbor say there's much more. That's what the father gives. Teaching good? Stay with me. Now, let's read on. That, that Matthew 7 where we are. Verse 11 I think. Mm -mm. If he then being evil... Know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? So can you see the distinction now? Okay, now, he already told you that when it comes to fish bread, that men know how to give such gifts. They know how to give such gifts. If you come to my house right now, and you say, the doctor say, if I don't eat eggs, I will die. I will give you 10 crates. It's not a prayer point. Eggs is not a prayer point. In the village, chickens drop eggs as they are moving, and children pick it. It's not a prayer point. The reason why you are not seeing eggs every time is because you left the village long ago. Go back and visit. You will see eggs. I'm teaching good here. <laughs> you can't be asking God for eggs. <laughs> the chickens in your village will give you. How much more? Oh, glory to God. Somebody shout, I receive much more. That's what your heavenly father gives. Much more. What the father gives is the much more. That's why now look at verse 12 of Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Mm -mm. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, 
Do ye even so to them? For this is the law and the prophets. Even though he mentioned fish and bread, he is not referring to asking material things. And by the way, if he meant asking for bread, egg, and fish, which of you have that need this morning? They're looking for bread to eat, fish. Shouldn't be a prayer point. If you block anybody at the closing prayer and say, I want egg. Only egg, yes. Come. They'll buy and give you to eat. That shouldn't be a prayer point. Egg shouldn't be a prayer point. Even if you knock in neighbor's door and say, I'm so hungry, please. If you just give me one boiled egg, I'll be okay. They'll give you. Even if they don't know God. So those are not things to be knocking heaven's door for. And asking and seeking and fasting. My father, my father, what are you waiting for? Eggs. What are you waiting for? Eggs. <laughs> so when he was talking eggs, bread, and fish, he wasn't talking literal. He wasn't talking in literal terms. Let me help you a little more. Luke chapter 11, verse number 10. Luke eleven ten. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Next verse. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Next verse. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil compared to your father, Know how to give good gifts unto your children. Now observe. He makes it clear now. How much more, much more, the much more of the father is, shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? What's the much more? The Holy Spirit. What's the much more? The spirit of adoption. What's the much more? The regeneration. What's the much more? The spirit of his son. What's the much more? The spirit that raised Christ from the dead that dwells on your inside. That's what the heavenly father gives. Am I teaching good this morning? Yeah. So he makes it clear. He explains what he has been saying. The Holy Spirit. So he uses Heavenly Father here. Gives the Holy Spirit. The giving of the Holy Spirit. Is that the new creation? Yes. Born of the Spirit. Born of God. Born again. Now back to Matthew 5.45. Are you enjoying it? Matthew 5.45. That you may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Which is in heaven. There's something he's pointing out to. Look at verse 43. Matthew 5, 43. Stay with me. You have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Wow. He's referring to the Old Testament. Okay? Now, that will be Deuteronomy 23 verse 6 and Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18. Deuteronomy 23 verse 6 and Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18. That is, you will find love in one, you will find hate in the other. (laughs) You will find love in one, you will find hate. Look at Deuteronomy 23 verse 6 so that we have clarity. Deuteronomy 23 verse 6. Thou shalt not seek their peace nor their prosperity all the days, all thy days forever. Leviticus 19 18. Leviticus, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, for I am thy Lord. So in one place he said, do not seek their prosperity. In another place, love them. So it's hate and love. Okay? So the question is, you will find love in one, and you will find hate in the other, which sounds like a contradiction. 
You have heard it had been said within the books of the scripture. One says, love your neighbor. Who is your neighbor? Anyone who is near you, including a stranger, neighbor. He said, you have heard. And now I see. Hmm. Look at verse 21 of that Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5, 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. You have heard. It's been said by them of old time. The word akios in the Greek. Akios. A-R-C-H-A-I-O-S. Akios in the Greek. Referring to before now of old time before now that is referring to the books of the scripture matthew 5 33 he repeats it again matthew chapter 5 verse 33 again you have heard that it had been said by them of old time thou shalt not forswear thyself but shall perform unto the lord thine oaths referring to what was said before and I can give you exegesis for that very cheaply for free Luke 9 18 and 19 prophets of old you have heard it has been said of old which people said it of old the prophets Luke 9 8 and 19 Acts 15 verse 7 and 21 Acts 15 verse 7 and 21 old time Acts 21 16 Acts 21 16 2 Corinthians 5 17 all things are passed away 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 the old world, the old world. You have heard it has been said by them of old. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 and Revelation chapter 20 verse 2. Second Peter 2 5, Revelation 2 9, uh, Revelation 20 verse 2. So it refers to before now. Things that were written or said before the four gospels you have heard it you have read it he says but now i say stay with me now i say to you so when he says love those who hate you he didn't say from me he says your heavenly father and he is reading your heavenly father from the Old Testament. You know, he sends the rain and the sun. Which means, as they read the Old Testament, they will just see what he has just said. The audience he was talking to easily understood what he had said because they were conversant with the Old Testament. It was easy for him to keep telling them what the Old Testament said because they were conversant with the Old Testament. The reason why today when we are teaching from the Old Testament, people have issues is because a lot of people are lazy. But the audience Jesus was talking to were conversant. That's why he just kept saying, you have read it has been said and they knew where he was making reference to. So it was clear, you know. Okay, Now, he sends rain. Who sends rain? The father. So he's reading about God in the Old Testament as the one who sends the rain and the sun. We are using the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi in this series. So is he contradicting the scriptures? You have read it was said, but I say, is he contradicting? That's a critical doctrinal question we want to deal with now for another few minutes is he telling us to choose one and abandon the other of course no those statements require careful investigation see with bible teaching you don't just carry things and be flying around no the bible is an ancient material that requires a lot of diligence in understanding what he is communicating. It's not just a book you just stand up and carry. That's why God has appointed teachers in the church 
to teach. So people can come to a place of maturity. And that's why brother Paul would tell Timothy, you must rightly divide it. You don't just teach it. You've got to. Bible teaching is rightly dividing. Somebody asked me, Dr. Damina, do you have any book on Bible interpretation? I say, everything I teach is Bible interpretation. The whole fulcrum of my teaching is Bible interpretation. Every time I come up here, what am I doing? I'm interpreting the scriptures. So if you want Bible interpretation material, buy everything I have taught. Because everything I teach here is Bible interpretation. There's no particular material for it. All the material it is. Because we don't have anything we do here other than interpreting the Bible. Because it's, it, it's in the interpretation of the scriptures that the scriptures come alive. And that's where you are fed. And that's where you grow. Alright? Now. <laughs> so, those statements require careful investigation. Look at that Matthew 5.45 again. Matthew chapter 5 verse 45. That you may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. On the just and on the unjust. What is he referring to here as the son? He sendeth son. What is he talking about son? Is he talking about sunlight? Or is he talking about rainfall? What is sun? Matthew 13, 43. Let's do some work. Matthew chapter 13, verse 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who had ears to hear, let him hear. The word has to do with shining. <laughs> Matthew 17 verse 2. Matthew 17 verse 2. And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. So sun means to shine. So he's talking about shining. Who shines? He the father shines on the good and on the evil. So the word there has to do with light. Shining light. What will light do? Light will be love. Light will bless. Light will pray for. Light will not hate. He makes his son, his light, to love, to bless, including enemies. To pray for. To do good. To both bad and good people. Why? Because he is light. There's no darkness in him. He cannot be otherwise. <laughs> God is light. He cannot be otherwise. He cannot for any reason. Be anything else other than what he is. No matter who you are. Uh. You don't want to miss the next service. Oh, the song, ah. I can't wait to get there. I'm in a hurry. Now, so it is light in contrast to darkness. That's what Jesus was teaching them in Matthew chapter 5. Then the next statement he makes, he makes his rain. The word rain is from another Greek word, brecho, 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 or breco, B R E C H O. Rain, Luke 16, 9 to 10. Luke 16, verse 9 to 10. And I say unto you, make yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in the much. Unjust. Unjust. Just, unjust. The word unjust is the word adikos in the Greek. A-D-I-K-O-S. Unjust, one who doesn't do what is right. Then the word evil is the word poneros in the Greek. P-O-N-E-R-O-S. For those making notes. P-O-N-E-R-O-S. Poneros, 
it means wickedness. Now, so Matthew chapter 5 verse 11. Matthew chapter 5 verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Matthew 5 37 and 39. Matthew 5, 37 and 39. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than this, commit of evil. 39. But I say unto you that you resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. So we have those who do evil. And we have those who do what is not right. So he says, your heavenly father shines his light. And makes his rain to fall. His rain and his light is how he describes him blessing those who cause and those who do evil. He blesses them. He does good to them. So the sun and the rain is they are figurative of how God responds with his goodness, his light, to people whether they are good or bad. That is, your badness does not influence his, his, his attitude towards you. Your evil does not influence God's attitude or God's character. He is good in spite of you. He is good irrespective of you. And there's nothing you can do to make him react. Because he doesn't have it. And a man cannot give what he doesn't have. There's no evil in him. So no matter what you do, the only thing that keeps coming out of him without even his consent is good. So both good and bad people, God's response to both characters is good. Am I teaching good? Am I teaching good? <laughs> when people pray, fall and die, they don't even know God to start with. They don't even know God. Because if they know God, they won't pray those prayers. So when those people are praying, consider that a native doctor is in operation. Because it's only native doctors who, who say such things. It's only native doctors. You can't find that in Jesus. You can't find that in Jesus' character. He went about doing good even at the point of crucifixion and the height of betrayal, denial, and rejection. The only thing that could come out of him is forgive them. Because that's all he has. That's all he has. There was nothing in him other than forgive them they don't know what they, he excused their evil. There's nothing else in him other than that. He's good all the time. That's his nature. And he doesn't struggle to display it. It flows out of him without even knowing. That's his nature. You know what the series is titled? I forgot I didn't even tell you the title. <laughs> I'm too much in a hurry. <laughs> Reflecting the Father. Reflecting the Father. He never struggles to do anything good. He's just good. That's who he is. Oh, glory to God. I say glory to God. Whoa, I tell you, I'm enjoying this. I'm almost done. Are you blessed? Are you glad you came this morning? Are you in a hurry to hear what I will say in the next service? Yeah, you know, I, I have not done, I've not dealt with that Matthew 6. Our Father, which art in heaven, I love you, thy name, thy king. I have not dealt with that. I just started. I want to enter that thing well. I want to enter that thing well. Because they punish me with that prayer as a little boy. Oh yeah, say the Lord's prayer. Our Father, two times eleven. Hello, be thy name. Jackie, they come. 
<laughs> because we couldn't say it well. We created our own to put inside. And we will say it in a way you will know that's what we are saying. It sounded like the Lord's prayer. We said it in the morning, we said it in the evening, we said during assembly, sometimes inside class, during Bible teaching CRK, uh, the Lord's prayer. Oh, Father, two times eleven, I love it, I know. Jackie, they go, Jackie, they go. <laughs> so, you know, it, it was the, the, the prayer was too much. I, we didn't even know what we were saying. Father everywhere. <laughs> Only the widely father. <laughs> Whether this goof is I go to my father. <laughs> yeah, they will be praying to one father in heaven. As little boys, that's what we kept doing, you know. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Which means that Jesus simply describes actions of men contrary to what people have done unto them. Actions of you as God's son must be contrary to what others do to you. So now, what comes to mind, hey, listen, I want to close. If you miss this one, you shouldn't even have come to the service. I want to close. Uh, when Jesus was talking about do good to those who despitefully use you, bless those who curse you, He was preaching from Genesis. Yeah. He was preaching from Genesis. He was teaching from Genesis. So when he will now say, bless those that curse you, do good to those who despitefully use you, where will he be coming from in Genesis? Cain and Abel. Cain rejected God's gift. Cain rejected the gospel. And Cain was to be a fugitive and a vagabond and a wanderer. And Cain said, oh God, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And God put a mark on Cain and said, if anybody touch Cain, I will discipline you. Look at God protecting a murderer and a rejecter of God. Why? Because God does good to those who despitefully use him. He blesses those who curse him. He re responds positively to those who don't treat him well. So because we see how God treated Cain, Jesus now said you too, the same way your father handled Cain and Abel's case, you handle people who don't like you. Stand up, let's close this service. Is that clear? Okay, so we will start from there in the next service. And then we will arrive at the Lord's Prayer in that second service. Glory to God. I say glory to God. If you understand it, shout glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't your neighbor say, I am just like my father. I have received much more from my father and I give the same to those who love me those who hate me and to everyone I do not have dual character I have consistency of character just like my father tell your neighbor it's not my fault I'm just like my father people say you are too good tell them it's not my fault I'm just like my father. People say, how can you forgive with all this? It's not my fault. I'm just like my father. How can somebody treat you like that and you're still good to him? It's not my fault. I'm just like my father. Somebody say, how can somebody treat you like this and you're still wishing him well? It's not my fault. I'm just like my father. That's my nature. I reflect my father effortlessly. Amen. Amen. I've got my father's character. I've got my father's eyes. I've got my father's ears. I've got my father's mouth. I'm just like my father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your precious word. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge keeps growing big in this house. 
Light keeps shining in the dark places. Light keeps shining in our hearts and minds, bringing to bear our realities. Thank you, Father. Now I ask that this revelation keeps growing big on our inside until nothing else matters. Thank you for your word this morning. And we rejoice that this day, all that makes God, God lives on our inside. And we are boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, we give you praise. And I declare for everybody under the sound of my voice, victory is yours eternally. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Can I have some celebration in this house? Glory! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Some of you are not celebrating your only will. I want some. Glory! Glory! Turn to two, three people around you and tell them, I'm just like my father. It's not my fault. I'm just like my father. Ay, 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 ay. Glory to God. Say with me, I bless those who cost me. I pray for those who despitefully use me. I am kind to those who are unkind. I am good to those who are not nice at all. It's not my fault. That's my DNA. Amen. <laughs> Glory. You don't want to miss the next service, so you, you better get up and get ready for it. You know, Amen. Now, remember, today is our partnership service. Everybody around the world, we want to thank all of you partners and friends, both in this house, online, on television, on radio, and all of you in our various campuses who continually partner with this ministry and always ensures that you support all that we do for the kingdom of God in this house. Today is partnership. And the banking details are scrolling for partnership with this ministry on the screen right now. On the screen. Whether you're watching on Kingdom Life Network or you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. Okay? I won't say Twitter now because Twitter is also... Okay. So those of you that are watching on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and all of you watching on television and radio, there are banking details of this ministry online. Now listen carefully. Don't send your money to anybody's account that is not the account on the screen. Because some of you people are inboxing you accounts that are not accounts of this ministry. If anybody gives you any account outside the account of this ministry, know that your money doesn't come to us. It doesn't come to us. Those whose monies come to this ministry, we have your data, we have your details, and we always make sure a letter is sent to those of you online, on TV, on radio, from my office, signed by me. Signed by me to acknowledge your giving to this ministry, and I speak words of blessings over you. Those of you whose monies have reached us, You've gotten letters from me. And if you gave your money through somebody or to somebody and you didn't get a letter, go to him and say, I need a letter that has Dr. Damina's signature. Immediately. I want to be sure my money got to destination. We are not ignorant. Amen. Whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, I mean, uh, Instagram. <laughs> Dr. Gabriel, stop this thing you're doing. Why are you putting Twitter in my mouth? <laughs> Did I say anything? Okay. So, <laughs> make sure you get it later. For power citizens, every time you give in our office, we give you receipts, right? We, we acknowledge them. We make sure you get it. Or except you dropped it right here on the pulpit where all of us are, of course. And I pray directly for you. But all those that reach out to us, 
we always make sure you get it later. And if you don't get it later in church here and you want it later, why not just let us know? We give you a later. But I just thought there's no need to be giving you laters all every time. Otherwise, your house will be full of my laters in a short while. <laughs> so since you're directly here, we have you here. But the online people who are from distances, from our various campuses and all the places, make sure you get your laters from me, thanking you for what you do for this ministry. And we want you to know we love you. We're glad that you're always partnering with us. We have a lot to do this month and the month of July into the first week of August. And we need a, we need a lot of money to get that carried out. Yes, because Bible school is coming. 30 days of glory is coming. Uh, one week uh, homecoming is coming. We have a lot to do. All of our budgets and bills we receive by faith. They are paid for in Jesus' name. And I thank God that in the name of Jesus, your hearts are stirred up. You're willing in the day of his power. Your resources are released for the advancement of God's kingdom. And we declare that your needs are met supernaturally. Every partner of this ministry around the world, we decree that wherever you are, opportunities avail themselves to you. And we decree that you are led by the spirit. We decree that you make informed decisions. We decree that you make informed choices. We decree that supernaturally you walk into productive relationships you are hindered from anything that will bring losses to you in the name of Jesus we speak grace upon you grace upon you grace upon you great grace upon you and we decree that you have sufficiency in all things you abound unto every good work those of you that have been given already towards the social media campaign we declare that your needs are met supernaturally so go ahead make more money so we can do more for the kingdom in the name of Jesus Father, we give you praise for the blessing in Jesus' precious name. And every believer sees a powerful amen. amen. Now listen to me, online people and television people and radio audience and everybody else. Like I said last Sunday, I, I really want people, apart from your partnership commitment, to support our social media campaign because we're going to go very aggressive as we build up towards 30 days of glory. And we also want people that want to help us pay for radio broadcasts. So if you want to pay for a radio broadcast, let us know. Just indicate, shoot a mail. You want to support social media campaign, $100, $5. $500, $1,000, $5,000, whatever you are capable of doing to help us get the gospel. Listen, you know we are in this thing together. It is our collective assignment to get this world to the over 7 billion people on earth for Jesus. That's the only thing we can do. He died. Our responsibility is that we now lay down our lives so that others can get what Christ has provided. So I'm expecting to hear from you today. Shoot a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com indicating whether you want to partner, you've not been a partner, you want to start, or you want to support the social media campaign. Please, we need it as soon as possible. If you want to, you know, you, you can start paying off your social media campaign monies today, tomorrow, next tomorrow, because the campaign has started already. And we want to build up that momentum. So shoot a mail if you want to support the campaign or you want to be a partner of this ministry to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Drabel, Dr. D A D R, Drabel Damina at yahoo.com. And I want to thank you in advance for responding. Now, I want to take up your offerings this morning, everybody. We give in honor of the word of God. Every time we receive God's word, we respond to the word with our offerings. Let them that favor his righteous cause shout for joy. Let them continually say, the Lord be magnified and has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Please stand with me for another one minute. I'm almost done and I'll pray for all of you. Where's Jael? Is she in this service? Oh, she's not here. All right. Because I wanted her to, 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 to share with us something she spoke to me about within the week. You know, one of those mornings, she just came to my study. I was studying and preparing for this service. She just said, Daddy, we need to get this gospel as fast as possible around the world. Some people are spoiling God for us. And she spoke with such passion. And then I asked her what happened. And she gave me the story of something happening online. I wish she was here to give me that because I've forgotten the details. You know. She was so worried, so burdened. She said, people are spoiling this gospel. We need to push it as fast as we can. And get it to the ends of the earth. And I agree with her completely. Completely. We need to get it as quick as possible. 
a lot of people are mutilating God's character because they don't know him. They are preaching a God that does not exist in the Bible. They are preaching a God that only exists in the figment of their experience. They are preaching the God of their experience. They are not preaching the God of the Bible. Or they are preaching a God of religion, but not the God of the Bible. They are not the same. You've been in church all your life and you don't know Christ. You don't know God. They are not the same. And we have over 7 billion people to get this good news too. Because Jesus died for all of them. And we are his children on earth and we are responsible for our father's business to be carried out. So every time we give, that's what you have in mind. Our entire passion is to get this word to the ends of the earth. Praise the Lord. Grab your offerings, lift them up to heaven. Father, we rejoice as we give this morning in faith. We give with joy and we thank you for everyone giving in honor of your word. Our offerings are a sweet smell and thank you for the blessing upon this house. Thank you for grace upon this family in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Those of you online, we're about to sign you off, guys. You don't want to miss 11 a.m. is an appointment between myself and yours. We're going to get some more of this word into your hearts. And we look forward to seeing all of you at 11 a.m. GMT plus one. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning. Glory! Amen! Hit this thing. Let's do it as we give this. been blessed by this message. For these other messages and books by Dr. Abel Damina. Please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.